Welcome to Thriving Tribesmen. My name is Curry, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. So I was speaking to somebody recently and we were talking about how human beings were very barbaric. Very, everything was more centered around behaviors. The way we communicate was stacked towards behavior more than it was communication. So over a period of time, usually, in fact, after the Romans and the Greeks, they started becoming, making us more civilized, started th- th- talking about philosophy. So, you know, they started uh, changing how human beings interact and how we behave. And as you can see, some of things like uh, romance comes from the Romans. So the way we interact in, within a relationship, all of that uh, is evolved over a period of time. And we started to trying to be intellectual when it comes to love and sex and so on so in terms of when when people uh, i speak to people around being in a sexless relationship they go and they tell me that they've been asking to have sex and generally if you're asking you're already failing i'm going to say that again if you're asking for sex you're already failing because really Sex isn't something that you can just logically make happen within a relationship. And there's a few reasons why. And I think I'll I'll touch on two and then we'll we'll, we'll land the plane on that. So uh, the first one is that if you you are going to talk about it, there's a few things that you have to have done in order to make it work. So, for example, in order for it to work by communicated verbally, you have to have real strong stance within the relationship on specific things within that relationship so and just in a, as an example so when I, when I say specific stance uh we've had an ongoing argument with me and my wife centered around the lgbtq whatever um thing and the the stance on giving pu- puberty blockers to children and uh we've obviously i've got a young daughter who you know, watches TikTok and so on, and can be impressionable. And they were saying, what if, my, my wife was saying, what if my daughter decides she wanted to be a boy? And what would you do about it? And I said, she's only 11. Yes, she might feel like she wants to be a boy, but I don't think I can alter the way she is based off of what she's saying right now. I don't think she's at the right mind to make that sort of decision. So we've argued about it. So they've, well, but what if she's unhappy? And what if she commits suicide? I mean, all of these are, are all good points and they're all potentials. Not, at the same time, I'm saying, well, the, within, <laughs> within the law right now, if she, my daughter went and said, I want to get a tattoo, she wouldn't be able to get a tattoo. If she went into a shop and wanted to buy alcohol, she couldn't buy alcohol. So there's certain things that she cannot make a decision that, are, you know, this is a, a life-altering decision. So giving it up onto her to make that decision sounds a bit crazy. My point being, I can make a very strong stance and she might get offended by it. And it's okay for her to get offended by it. The power of doing that is that when I have strong stance on specific things and for me, that I'm un- unmovable for it, Whenever then I say something to her, she's most likely to believe me because I have evidence of being able to have strong stance on something. So, for example, if I turn around and say, baby, you look beautiful, she'll know that I really mean it because I'm somebody who has got a track record of having strong stance on something. Now, that's just in our relationship. So there's other places where I've got really strong stance about certain things, about certain ideas, about certain values. And all of those, I, st- I stick by them. And sometimes whether she's evolved by herself and her her view has changed and she challenges those views, she can challenge them and whether she can convince me or whatever it is, I will continue remaining on that stance until I get different ev- evidence for me to change. You know, so... And that becomes a, a, something that is important for you moving forward from a social standpoint. So conversational verbals standpoint, you have to have that in order to utilize verbals to make things happen sexually. And to be honest with you, I think it's about 20%. The other 80% is behavioral. It always comes down to behavior. We're not different to animals. 
when Amnim was about to have sex, there's no communication, no words or anything. They have certain things that are triggers. Sometimes the females have certain pheromones that they project. Whatever it is, they it's it, there's, there's triggers and you can have those similar triggers within your relationship where you know you well, no, well, obviously we call it attraction into seduction but there's certain things that you can be doing in order to do so and all of it is comes down to behavior yes there might be some verbal side of it but this the verbal is influenced by what you are feeling on the inside and how you're behaving so for example if i'm saying something i'm saying something to amuse myself but really, it's more about how I'm saying it and the behavior I'm exhibiting while I'm saying it. So it then those are the things that will get her to like me. And then when I'm doing seduction, again, it's still behavior. So you have to lean towards behavior. A lot of you guys logically look look at it that, yes, you're my wife. We're married. We should be having sex. And you feel entitled. And you just logically looking at this situation to the point where you try and communicate this in a way like we should be having sex. Why are we not having sex? There's something wrong with you. This is terrible. And you just going down this path where there's so much emphasis on the social side instead of actually looking at that you have to behave a certain way. And obviously there's other bits that when it comes to behavior, you have to be behaving like a leader. You have to be resilient to as you communicate some of those uh, ideas or even uh, um, sub-communicate uh, with, with, with the dominance or whatever. You have to be willing to, when I say resilience, is that whenever you are actually in the process of doing attraction and seduction, at any point when things go wrong, you're willing to not allow that to affect your mood and your behavior and the way you're, you're seeing her. Because a lot of you guys, you're... Re- Re- rejection sensitive <laughs> oh god so when you get rejected you, you're you're so quick to self-disrupt and that is a very bad trait especially from a leader perspective you know so that communicates more volumes to her than what you can say with the mouth so if like sometimes uh, and we used to have this quite a lot in when I used to be a pickup artist we used to say if she rejects you, just stand there for an additional 40 seconds. When, when you do, you'll be surprised what will happen. Just that resilience of having to stay there. You know, she's been absolutely mean. She's told you to fuck off, potentially. And then you stand there and you smile. And you say, oh, thank you. For her... It's mind-boggling, like, fucking hell, I've just told you to fuck off, and you're smiling. And she, the, the shift from her being unattracted to attracted is massive. And I can guarantee you, like, there's a 99% um, it's 99% uh, success rate with this. Every time we had students, every time we had people that would just stay that 30 minutes longer... Obviously, you still have to be quite confident. If you look dejected in any way, then you're going to be pushed. But if you're extremely strong mentally and you have lots of resilience, you should extremely move from one extreme to the next extreme. So this is why it's important to actually start understanding there's a behavior towards it. And if you want to learn more about the behaviors, there's a free course that we are releasing very soon. It's called Unleashing Unlimited Sex sexual power within a relationship and really it's more about really understanding what are those things that i need to do how do i behave what is attraction what are the things that i'm doing in in attraction what are the things that i'm doing to transition what are the things i'm doing within seduction how do i do that how do i keep it going how do i maintain that those are the things the questions i will be answering within that course and it's a free course so we'll be sending out the link very soon if you want to get be part of this go to thriving underscore tribesman on our instagram and just write unleash and we'll know that you'll be one of them we'll send you the link again 
when you go to 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 instagram nobody will ever know that you send me a dm <laughs> so don't be afraid to you don't have to add me as a friend or anything like that just write me a dm so i know you you're there so we can just send you the information if you've got any questions ar around this what i've just talked about today you can also ask a question and then i can make another video um another podcast episode around this if you've got any questions that you'd like to see on video because i started making some youtube videos we've released the youtube video i'm uh, still working on the sound and there was some lag on it so but I'm, I've I released it. I don't want to uh, <laughs> procrastinate any more that I have. So we've put it out there. Still some good information on there. Um, I'm now looking for a different source of recording it and editing it so I can get better um, quality on everything. But we, we're working towards some really good things this year. Excited about it, guys. Uh, go and check out the YouTube channel, which is Thriving Tribesmen as well. And thank you very much, guys, for everything. Take care.